once upon a time. On this particular day, I was stopped at the traffic lights. And a song came on that instantly took me back to my teenage years. It's one of those anthems that really stays with you. Well, as the song of the energy increased, so did my passion and my conviction. As I sang it out loud to myself in the car. And just as I slipped into full air guitar solo, I happened to look over. And the person in the car next to me was staring straight at me. Well, in that moment, the world stopped. Shame and embarrassment came up instantly. Then something interesting happened. The person in the car next to me gave me a big smile and a knowing nod, as if they'd been right there with me the whole time. But at the very least, it had an experience like that once before. This untethered moment of connection brought us together. Well, I went home that day and I shared the story with my wife. Well, she just laughed and said, that kind of thing's happened to me before. Perhaps that person went home and told the people in their lives the story of what happened, that guy at the traffic lights. I'm now sharing this story with you. And in this moment, our stories are connecting us. It is by sharing our stories that we can make sense of this human experience. It's by sharing our stories that we feel a sense of belonging to something much bigger. By sharing our stories, we don't feel so alone. Now, in the past few years, since 2020, when the world changed, I've witnessed and experienced a growing disconnection. And I feel strongly and passionately that this is directly proportional to the amount that we're sharing our stories. In a world of remote work, hybrid work, automation, self-checkouts, our points of individual connection, of felt connection, are diminishing. And our stories are being lost, or at the very least, are not being shared quite so much. In a report earlier this year by We Are Social and Meltwater, it found that worldwide, we are spending on average six hours and 37 minutes on the internet every day. Two hours and 31 minutes on social media, on average, every day. And over half of those, those respondents stated that their primary reason for getting on social media was to connect with family and friends. Contrast this with a study in 2022 from the Australian National University Centre for Social Research and Methods, who found that just over a third of Australians had experienced loneliness in the last week, 35.6%. Now, overwhelmingly, the advice that we get to combat this sense of loneliness and to increase connection is to share quality time with family and friends or to share time with others out in nature. In my experience, one of the important things that makes this quality time quality time is by sharing our stories. Stories have a way of communicating our experiences, our wisdom, our lessons. They give us context for this whole thing of being human. When we hear other people's stories and tales from the past, it gives us a lens through which to look, to see ourselves and where we fit. Stories help us to see things differently. In this technological age, stories can sometimes be described as something that we flick up and down or swipe left and right. These aren't the stories that I'm talking about here. Now, in the past 10 years, I've had the privilege of working with young people and adults alike. And I've witnessed firsthand the power of sharing stories. Now, there are three types of stories that I'd like to share with you in particular. Each different story has its own purpose and its own reason for being. The first type of story is myths, fables, and legends. These are the types of stories that get passed down from generation to generation, 
since the beginning of time. And while the words might change, the essence of the lessons remains the same. So picture this. It was an indoor basketball court, 90 year nine students, six facilitators, 10 teachers, no microphone and no PA. <laughs> the topic of conversation was transitioning from childhood to adulthood. Well, needless to say, it was bedlam. And despite our facilitators' best efforts, and despite the teachers' best efforts, we were struggling to wrangle the group to even start the conversation. We tried some movement to try and engage the group in a different way. And this only escalated things to the point where some overzealous students were swinging on a barrier <laughs> and it smashed a window. <laughs> At this point, one of my co-facilitators came racing up to me, fear in his eyes. And he said, what do you want to do? To which I replied, I don't know. <laughs> but then an idea came to me. I asked the teachers, can we get them all into the lecture theatre next door? And we corralled them all in. I walked out onto the stage. And as soon as I said the words, once upon a time, you could have heard a pin drop. I proceeded to tell an old myth about a young person that strove to be the ruler of the lands and how their honesty, their humility, their courage enabled them to get there. Well, the attentiveness and the active listening was a stark contrast to the melee that had been a few minutes earlier. In this moment, I really truly felt the power of telling a story. Well, the second type of story is our own personal story. Our personal story that comes from the experiences that we have, the interactions we have with others, in essence, the cast and the plot, how those things have shaped us into this experience that we call being human. Well, I was running a workshop for some 14 year olds in a school. And at this particular part of the day, we organised a sharing circle where the young people could share some stories about the challenges that they were facing. Well, as the story started to unfold, the fidgeting, the banter, the physicality, the distraction transformed into attentiveness, connection, stillness. It was truly remarkable. And as the stories deepened, so did the emotions. And the connections were truly felt. Afterwards, we debriefed what had happened in the circle. And one student said this, now I understand what empathy is. I mean, they talk about it here at school, but now I know what it feels like and what it means. Well, I bet you can imagine what the third type of story is. That's right, the stories we tell ourselves the ones we create in our own minds, the character, the plot. It was Mark Twain who said, my life has been filled with a thousand misfortunes, most of which have never happened. <laughs> How many times have we done that? Have we made it up? She said this, he said that. I bet they don't know how that made me feel. Perhaps it was that story of doubt or unworthiness. Perhaps we created a story in our own minds that what we'd experienced, no one had ever experienced before. How could anyone possibly understand? Well, I was running a workshop for a bunch of corporate people. And I shared part of my story, the story that I'd made up. I created in my own head. <coughs> I spoke of this idea that I wasn't good enough and that how could they possibly listen to me because of that? I spoke of the story of doubting myself and the narratives that had played out in my head on the way there. Well, to my surprise, the workshop went quite well. <laughs> what was even more surprising was the number of people that came up to me afterwards and thanked me for sharing my story. Because they too had felt similarly and in that moment had not felt so alone. 
The point is, we all have stories within us. And the act of sharing those stories enables us to learn and grow. It creates permission for other people to share their stories. But most importantly, sharing our stories helps connect us. And for me, I believe this is what humanity needs right now more than ever. And so I ask you this. What stories have you got? Who could you tell them to? And what would be the impact if you did? Thank you.